Here, in this semi-arid region of southeastern Kenya, these ladies have something to celebrate. They used to have to walk 10 to 15 kilometers every day to collect water for their families. Now, they only need to walk one or two kilometers. In the 1960s, this dry region of Kenya was being consumed by the desert. Overgrazing, deforestation, and low rainfalls were taking its toll, and the small rivers that ran through the region were dry most of the year. The people living here had a choice. They needed to either make plans to move and let the creeping desert take over their homes and farms, or start making some drastic changes to the stewardship of their lands. They began to form self-help groups in their villages and started investigating ways in which they could begin the long road back to reclaiming their homeland. With the leadership of a local farmer, Joshua Makusia, the self-help groups began making terraces, planting trees, and erecting small concrete walls on their seasonal rivers to harvest the sporadic rains that did come each year. Then something happened that was not quite expected. Within two or three years of pouring the concrete walls that spanned the seasonal rivers, the riverbeds behind the walls would fill up with sand. At first, it might have seemed as though all of their efforts to harvest the rains had failed and they were left with nothing but sand. However, the local people knew better. There was water in that sand. Lots of it. In fact, millions of liters of water. For millennia, the local people have survived the dry seasons in this part of Kenya by digging small holes in the dry riverbeds to find water. With water tables getting lower and lower every year, this practice was becoming more difficult and the holes were getting deeper and deeper. Now, the sand dams, as they are called, were collecting water at each dam point and conveniently storing it within the sand. Instead of all of the rainwater running off to the Indian Ocean, it was now being kept in the local region. The sand acted as a natural prevention against evaporation, and the people were once again able to collect water for themselves and their animals, even in the dry season, by simply digging small pits in the sand. Beginning in the 1990s, the Mennonite Central Committee, and now in association with the Canadian Food Grains Bank, began to partner with Joshua and his self-help groups, who formed their own locally registered NGO called the Utoni Development Organization. Primarily, through a Food for Work program, farmers in this region of Kenya were paid with food from Canada exchange for building sand dams, making terraces, and planting trees. Over the last five years, these hard-working groups have built over 250 sand dams, planted 650,000 drought-resistant trees, and constructed over one million meters of terraces. The program has introduced the local people to agricultural techniques that conserve water, enhance the soil, and use certified seeds for crops that are able to mature even during droughts. The overall impact of these technologies has been a dramatic rise in the water table throughout the region. Indigenous species of birds, fish, and animals are returning. Even during the worst drought to hit this part of East Africa in 60 years, local farmers are still finding enough water 
to irrigate their fields. A land that was being consumed by the desert is now once again blooming with life and producing food for consumption and income. With the amazing success of this program, the Utoni Development Organization is being overwhelmed with requests from surrounding villages to come and also help them implement the same techniques in their communities. As Canadians continue to support this program, they can know that their generosity is helping transform the lives of people throughout this whole region of southeastern Kenya. With your help, the Canadian Food Grains Bank and the Mennonite Central Committee are bringing people closer to food and water security. And that is something to celebrate. Thank you for your generous support. <laughs>